In the last video, we were talking about how to prove if-then uh, statements. So let me actually recap what I was talking about before. So if you are given some sort of if-then uh, statement and they ask you to prove it, so let me actually write that down. So prove, prove this, then the, the plan is this. It's very simple. This is what you do. You assume your premise, which is the th stuff that's given after the if, and then your goal is to prove uh, your conclusion. So your first step is assume, assume premise, and then start from the premise, start from the premise, do some sort of uh, mathematical rearrangement or anything that's um, available to you that you can do. Maybe it's it, it doesn't have to be some sort of math equation. It could be something else as well. So you somehow, um, your goal is to somehow use theorems, uh, mathematical knowledge to convert the premise into, into your conclusion. Once you get to your conclusion, that's when your proof ends. Once you arrive at the, uh, once you show that you have successfully arrived at your conclusion, then you can say you, this is how my professor taught it to me, that you write QED at the end. That just uh, says that you concluded your proof. Now, if when you will be doing proof by contradiction, in certain texts and by certain professors, they use this symbol, this huge X with little uh, circles around it. And I don't use this, so you will probably not see me using this uh, symbol. And, and, and another one is a square, and you fill that in. And these are all uh, other notations to say that, well, my proof has ended. Has ended. Now, Let's talk about if and only if proofs. So now I don't think I need to uh, emphasize uh, with the definition of what if is. I think it should be quite clear to you that if and only if can be written as if, right? And this is the same as using the symbol with double-sided arrows like this. So this is if and only if, that's what if uh, uh, stands for. So if and only and only if. So how do we prove this? So let's say they tell you prove a, uh, if and only if statement. So this is the plan for that. Now before I move forward, you need to understand that if and only if is the same as using this equal sign. What does the equal sign mean? So it, let me actually give you an example. So if they give you A equals to B, what does this mean? That means that these, both of these things are interchangeable. These are equivalent to saying B equals B, A equals A, or or B equals A. So these are all just uh, different permutations of this original of this original uh, statement. However, m what I want to say is that w if if there is some sort of uh, equality, you are just saying that well, this is a sort of another representation of this, and this is another representation of this. So now, you know that if I draw a random uh, some some set, let's call it A, we know that A is a subset of itself. What does a subset mean? Uh, well, if we have some other, let's call this R, set R, and then S is inside of it, we would say that R, uh, sorry, not R, uh, S is a subset of R. What does that mean? That means that S is contained inside of R. Now, if somebody comes along and just gives you R and then asks you, is R a subset of R? So this is R, right? And they are asking you, does, does R, so does this thing, uh, so is this thing contained within this thing? Well, of course it is. So by, by that, that's just intuition. Um, we know that any set, 
So any set is a subset of itself. Of itself. So let's get back here. So now they ask you, is A a subset of A? Well, yes, it is. So yes, it is. So when they give you A equals B, you are just saying, it's, it's, it's the same thing as saying A is a subset of B and, so don't forget the and, B is a subset of A. This is very, very important in order to do if and only if proofs. So this is extremely important. If you are uh, writing notes, then I would advise you to make sure that you have this. This is uh, probably the best method to prove if and only if uh, statements. So now that you understand this, now that you understand that if we have a is equal to B, that is the same thing as saying with, with this whole thing, this is probably mathematically illegal, but as long as it makes sense to you, that's what I, that's, that's what I care about. So this thing is the same as A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. So now w once you understand this, you have to understand that this equal sign can be replaced by if and only if. And we know that if and only if is the same as double-sided arrow. So what we are basically saying is that A implies B, and in turn, B implies A, right? And we already know that this whole thing, so if we understand that these two things are equal, then we know that this thing is equal to this, therefore this thing must also be equal to that. So let me actually write it down. So, so let me actually put the arrow there, yes. So A implies B and B implies A, and this this is the symbol for if and only if, just so, just so you are not confused. So this is the same thing as A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A. So now that you understand this, you also probably understand that this seems to be having two, two portions, this portion and this portion. So if you want to prove if and only ifs, you have to go, so let me actually use the arrow. So you understand that, th okay, so A if and only if B is the same as a with the double-sided arrow with B, right? So in your proof, you first have to show that A implies B and then B implies A. However, a few, a few videos ago, I told you uh, about the one-sided arrow. What does this mean? This is the same thing as if then. So let's say you want to start with your first portion of the proof. You would assume this and you would prove. You would prove this. Similarly, once you finish the first portion, then you would assume this. So let me actually. So you would assume this and you would prove. You would prove this. So let me actually write this down. So in your first step, you would assume A and prove B. Once you finish, you write a little QED uh, and, and in brackets you put to the first portion. And then your second, your second step in a if and only if proof is to assume, assume B and prove A. Now, it would be very unfair uh, from on, on, from my part if I did not give you an example. So let's actually prove a lemma. Let's prove lemma. This is our first lemma in the course. So I'll just call it lemma one to make it easy for you. So lemma, lemma one. So let's say they say prove 
oh, okay. They wouldn't have proved the, the word prove in the lemma because a lemma is a mini. So if you didn't watch the video, then you should probably go back. But a lemma is a mini theorem. So they don't tell you to prove it. They just give you the lemma. So let's say the lemma is A is a subset of A union B. So now this uh, is your lemma and the, on, on, on the exam the problem will be uh, prove so example prove lemma one okay so in order to prove this right what you want to do is you want to look at the symbol you want to treat them as two separate entities so you can always you can always assume your, your uh, premise and you your goal in a proof is always to prove your conclusion so to do this to prove lemma one you, f you, you first have to assume some element within a so let's actually let's call it alpha alpha so this is my answer this is my answer so you start off with let me choose an arb arbitrary alpha in A. Now for future I will just say let alpha be an element of A. Since this is your first proof I'm being very thorough so you don't need to write this whole sentence you can just write let alpha be an element of A. Now you or what let me include myself with you so we need to show, we need to show that A, so so alpha actually, that alpha also lives within, within, within um, A union B. Now, this could have been simply written as alpha Okay, wait, so we show alpha is an element of A union B. So let me actually underline this. I am being very thorough here, but you could have just written this and then written this, and th that would be equivalent to me writing this, this whole thing. So let alpha be an element of A. So it's, so let's, let's, that's A, and alpha lives it's a it's an element of A, so it's somewhere in there. And our goal is to show that well, if if this is uh, if this is uh, A union B, then alpha is also an element of this. Now, a few videos ago, we talked about uh, what unions are. We know that uh, the union symbol means that you connect them so if you have this and you have another so let's call this r and and then let's call this s then and this has uh, circles in it so it's filled with circles and this is filled with triangles then if i give you r union s that would be this huge this huge set with all the all all the circles of r and with all the triangles of s all right so if you understand this, you understand that this has elements of R and, this is important, and of S. Now, in our proof, we are told that, well, we said that let alpha be an element of A. We need to show that alpha is an element of A union B. So you explore A union B. What is A union B? So you say, however, A union B means A, so let me actually use capitals, A and, A and B, therefore thus alpha has to be an element of A union B because So I should have used alpha there. Sorry, yeah, I started using A. Thus, alpha is an element of A union B because 
alpha is an element of A. So now, if that was a little bit confusing to you, let me let me uh, show it to you in in this uh, in the shapes example. However, let me underline this so you would have to put this whole sentence down. So uh, to repeat myself, the underlined uh, green lines basically are all you need. The the everything else is extra. Uh, extra uh, things that I wrote so that you would understand what I have done. So what I basically said is that if you have some sort of uh, set A, so let's actually work with the with the ones that we have. This is A and this is uh, A union B. Let's call this B. Let's call this B. That's B. So we know that's what we said let alpha be in a so alpha is clearly in a we chose that we can we we can do whatever we want with the with the premise so once we understand that alpha is in a if we connect it with b right that's what union is that's that's what union is a and b if we connect them if we connect them and let's say there was another element in b let's call that beta then A union B would have alpha and beta inside of it. And that's what we said. We show alpha is an element of A union B. That's what we wanted to show. But we know that A union B means A and A, uh, A and B, sorry, <laughs> not A and A, A and B, right? Because if you unionize them, you are connecting them. Clearly alpha has to be in A. Thus alpha is an element of A union B because alpha was an element of A and that's exactly what we needed to show. You you have to be very precise about what you want to show and once you show it, well, you conclude your, your theorem and you put a little QED at the end. You put a QED. I hope this was helpful.